Welcome everybody to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. It is December 13. It's Thursday the 13th, not Friday the 13th. Yeah. You all join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On to our agenda, if we can start with the introduction of members, beginning with Mr. Frank DeLuca. Frank DeLuca, school board representative. Brian Warburton. My name is Jones. Mike Wolf. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. David Mara. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. Welcome all. Um, information requests. Uh, we did get the default budget. We still have this classified as pending. Uh, anyone objecting to me making this satisfied? We did finally get the full, I think. Is that right? Everyone agree with that? Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Still have not seen any hiding the hair of the CIP yet. And uh, you requested, Brian, that I send uh, or compile the trash truck release info. Yes. Uh, which I did send out a couple of days ago, I believe. Are you, yeah. are you satisfied with that? Satisfied in what way? And, and that what you requested, <laughs> I delivered to you. I, the information requested, yes, but I will okay. have some questions. Okay. So is there any other new requests that we have not stated on topics that we've already begun to discuss? We can add to this later on in the new business uh, based on what we discussed subsequently in the agenda. Is there any other old business? Okay. Okay, on to the town uh, warrant articles. Do we have any warrant articles yet for, for our consideration? No, you'll have them Tuesday or Wednesday. But I plan on emailing them to you as soon as I can approve them and vote on them. Okay, great. Um, would it be possible, because those are compiled with uh, Microsoft Word, right? And uh, if we can get the Word document instead of an image so that we can actually do word searches, that would be helpful, okay? I'll see what I can do. Okay, thank you. So we have uh, warrant articles coming on Tuesday or Wednesday, right, Fred? You said. Yes, sir. How many? Yeah, select what I them by Monday. Yeah. How many? How many do you anticipate will be? Right now there are 50 warrant articles. Well, how many do you anticipate will be ready for us uh, on Tuesday or Wednesday? All of them. All of them. <laughs> we have all the ones with the warrant. The warrant will be finished at this selectman's meeting on Monday night. Oh, excellent! That's Except excellent. Except for petition articles. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. We don't have those until January. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's pretty excellent, I would say. And are the, can I just ask a question? Are the petition warrant articles, is it 5 o'clock, like the law used to be for 100 years, and then somebody moved in a couple years ago at 8 o'clock at a public hearing, and then we were told it's midnight, so can I? Well, can let, me, I, let me answer that. Yeah. The law has always been up until that day. The day ends yeah. on midnight, so that uh, yeah. legally hasn't changed. What okay. changed was the tradition of 5 o'clock. Okay. So okay. somebody could... So, could submit a warrant article at 10 o'clock that night. Right. If and you we, can find and, a select. And, and we, I'm sorry? If you can find a select. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they don't talk to me, so I'd have to try to find <laughs> one. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, talk to me. I don't uh, know which one I... <laughs> Regina <laughs> talks to you. Right here. All right, let's calm yeah, down, I mean, guys. I talk to anyone that talks to me. No, but I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm just saying let's that... Let's stay on topic, guys. So that's but for the public at home, those that are considering sitting over Christmas doing a petition warrant article, Technically, they can at 10 o'clock that night bring it to a selectman. That's correct. Thank you. That's all I wanted to let the public know. That's all I was asking. But you'll note, after we had that experience a few years ago, and particularly this year, I have scheduled the meetings to accommodate that, so we'll have time to consider even those, those late arrivals. Hopefully there won't be any, as there wasn't last year, for example, but we don't really have control over that. That's no, up I understand. To, that's up to the citizens. Okay, right now, as you know, just to touch base on the, on the schedule, as they like to say in Britain, um, we decided to make what was scheduled on December 18, next Tuesday, tonight, and not do December 18. But now I'm hearing that we're going to have a whole bunch of warrant articles coming to us. Uh, I guess Fred will be ready for our next Tuesday night meeting if we choose to have that. Is that, is that fair? That's 
up to the board. Well, no, no, I mean, we'll have the warrant articles available to us. We we'll won't really have, have time to review them yet, but they'll be available. They'll, I, if, as soon as the selectmen vote on them, we'll right. put them in proper order. Right. We will set up a program to give you all of the warrant articles with funds, funds in them because that's what you have to vote on. Exactly. And mm -hmm. we will get that out either on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm hearing that uh, we should probably use, presently, we have a snow date on January 3. And we should probably use that. Uh, that way, it'll give us two weeks as individuals to review the email warrant articles that come to us. Is that reasonable for everybody? I think it's reasonable. Okay, great. Yeah. Especially when there's 50. Fred, could you also uh, David? print out paper copies, please? David, he's going to send it in Word. I'm going to try I know, to send, gonna it send it in Word. I heard that. Yeah. yeah. I'd like them to print them out. <laughs> Traditionally, and I assume the tradition will be maintained that when we actually are. Uh, considering the warrant articles, you bring the printed warrant articles yes, to the meeting, correct. right? Yep. So you'll have the printed version yeah. at the meeting, uh, uh, presumably on January 3rd right now, tentatively scheduled as such, right? Okay. So I have a question. How, how many of the warrant articles are money articles of the 50? Fred, you got a clue on that? Oh. Rough better estimate. Than, better than half. 25? 25 to 30. There you go. Okay. Anything else? Questions, statements on warrant articles? Okay. Moving on to everyone's favorite line, which is insurance. Does anyone have any questions on insurance? It just has the one section under it. <coughs> yeah, just one section under insurance. Any questions, comments, or statements from anyone on insurance? Seeing none. I, I do have questions. Uh, Christy, I believe you have something to say on this, right? Yeah, I have the, um, since the Board of Selectmen put forth this budget, the life insurance rates have come in, and they have gone from 18 cents per thousand to 21 cents per thousand. So if the committee wishes um, to increase that line to properly reflect what we should be paying next year, um, the new amount would be $22,596.84. And okay. I know you already visited the library, but their number would change too, so. Sure. Um, Which I have that if you'd like. And these handouts that you just did, that does not, that changes. No, because I haven't selected. populated the budget committee column yet so I didn't want to change the Board of Selectmen okay. column because they had already okay. voted on a different number. So what's the increase in dollar amount? It, it um, is now 22596 and 84 cents. This is for health insurance? No, no, this is um, for the life insurance line. Oh, life insurance. Okay. Yep, so it's, let's see, it's 19400 in the budget, so it's up about 3000 So it's an increase of about $3,196.84. And I can send this all to you if you want to save it for your final review. I just wanted to bring it up tonight <laughs> while you were discussing um, the life insurance, or the insurance I, section. I, I, I think we can just deal with it now. To get okay. It well, I know right. last week you had said something about waiting until final, so I just wanted to As make sure. As a general rule, we are, okay. in terms of, but in terms of individual ones that are mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, administrative in nature, we can just deal with them right away. Mr. Mr. David. Is this term insurance life? Yes. Thank you. And so therefore it's based on the whole group? Yes. With an average. Yep. Thank you very much. And the rate is steady for the whole group. Correct. If the individuals choose, they can buy additional, but that's at a cost that's to the employee, not yeah, the employer. Not budget. So the terms of the insurance haven't changed at all? No, no. The, the rate year. just went from 18 cents to 21 cents. And, and every year they, they recalculate the rate based on the population they're insuring, in this case it would be age. So basically the increase is probably related to increasing age, isn't it? Possibly, and I can also say we've had this company probably for, I'd say four or five years, and this is the first rate increase we've had. Mm -hmm. So, and when we were, when we switched to this company, we were paying either 26 or 27 cents per thousand, and that's mm -hmm. why we had gone out to try and find something that was a little more affordable, and cut that at that time from 26 or 27 down to the 18. And now it's jumping from 18 to 21. So it's still under. Could you state the number again, please? 
The total number? Yeah. It's twenty two thousand five hundred and ninety six dollars and eighty four cents. So it'd be twenty two thousand five ninety seven. Okay, I hear a motion from Mr. Plough, a second by Mr. Warburton. Uh, any discussion on increasing it to 22,577? 597. 597. 597, thank you. Yes. I didn't hear your motion quite as accurately as I thought. Oh. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? David? I'm abstaining. Mr. Frank? I voted. You in favor? I'm okay. In favor. Get that, Barbara? Thank you. Okay. Anything else on insurance? I did have a question. I must have just, it, it just kind of went right over, went right past me until the NHA may dues. Uh huh. So I don't know if this is for Christy or the manager who's ever answering. Um, the actual 2017 17904, 2018, the budgeted 17904, it's an actual 18. 576 at the end of September, but we know, wasn't there a motion, did I hear 20,000 that we paid NHMA? Um, we only paid them one time and it was 18,576. Why did I think the selectmen's meeting? The new, out? we have the new bill upstairs and I don't remember, recall, we have the bill for 19, we haven't paid it, obviously, because we're not in 19. Um, and but that one, I don't remember what the new amount is. So that 19. new amount, you took, was uh, it? It was 19 something? I think so. But yeah, 19 that's my something. Memory as well. Yeah, that was the. <clears throat> so that needs to be adjusted, right? It's $19,044. For next year? For next year. 1944. Sure. 19044. 19044. You, Question, you, comment, or motion? Oh, well, I'm not going to make a motion. I'll be voting against it, but I think we should amend it or whatever the committee wants to do. Well, I don't hear a motion. I'll make a motion that we amend it to the $19,044. Second it. Okay. okay. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? All those opposed? Those abstaining? What are you doing, Mr. Frank? I didn't, hear, I didn't see your hand. It was behind my head. He always head. votes yes. Didn't you watch his movies? His hand was behind your head. I didn't see it. Okay. Did you get that, Barbara? You made the motion? I made it in uh, Mr. Ladd's second. <coughs> Mr. Walburton opposed. Everyone else except Mr. Me. Neutral. Mr. Pluff opposed. Mr. Pluff and Mr. Walburton opposed. Everyone else was in favor except Mr. Neutral abstained. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I figured, can I just put that? $19,044, so 19044 Anything else on insurance? Thank you. I'll move on to the next item, which is debt service. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Could we fix the library, or did we not? I don't have that number because I didn't know we were visiting the library. We'll do that at a subsequent meeting. I just looked to see if I had that, and I didn't bring that with me. Debt service, is that what you? That's what yeah. we're doing, yeah. Okay. Just so I can make sure I get on the same page. Any comments or questions from anybody on debt service? Debt service uh, is up 5.48%. Principal is up five. Principal is up five. Yeah. Right. Overall, it's, it's up 3.77. 3 yeah. 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 Any reason why you want to say Interest is down. Principal is up. In, um, principal is up because we, let's see, what did we take on in there? I think the 2017 Lafayette Road Sewer Project came on the books in 19. Okay. So this is all Lafayette Road. This increase. Yes, because that's only though that's only um, <coughs> principal debt that we'll be taking on in 2019. Thank you. Any uh, that's through September 30th. These numbers. Do we have any? Later? No, that's the actuals. I was speaking about the. Okay, that was budget. the actual. Yep. Uh, okay. And the increase is entirely due to the many appropriations associated with the downtown Lafayette Road work. Right. That's what we needed to know. Okay. okay. Thank you. 
Any further questions, comments? Thank you very much. We'll move on to information technology, also known as MIS. Questions and comments on MIS, anybody? Can I just ask for clarification? Mr. Who, who's in charge of MIS? Myself. Christine. Oh, you're in charge of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Any other questions or comments on MIS? We have a... Uh, Mr. Weber. So I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand. Um, computer support up f almost 40%. We go into that a little bit? A lot of that has to do with, uh, um, over the last couple of years, we work, I've worked um, to reallocate some of the things. They didn't used to have the computer support, so they would just throw a lot of that stuff into supplies and expenses or repairs and maintenance, replacement equipment. It was just kind of scattered all over for all your different licensing. So if you look at the details <coughs> section, it yep. literally has a breakdown of all the different um, licensing and security suites and firewalls and all of the breakdown there. So I think it's more since that budget overall is not necessarily up and nothing else is really down a whole bunch. I think a lot of it has to do with just more the reallocating of funds to better reflect where they are being spent from and where they best fit in this budget. So, where in this area is the uh, the Kansas? It's not. It's not in here. Where is it? The website was in the Warren article. Oh, it's Warren in article the Warren article. No, it was already in. Oh, it was, already it was in Warren article year. number eighteen last year. That oh, was that's approved. right. Yeah. Okay. And there's no support in the first year, yeah. so it's not in there. Oh, okay. It will be yeah, in here. Yeah. It will go under computer support. Next um, year. The annual support once it goes into effect, but the first year of support is covered with the cost of the um, website, with the design and stuff. Well, you signed a contract on Halloween. Right. On Halloween. Yeah. How appropriate. Uh, well, I sent you all a copy of the contract. That's correct, yep. And it was signed on Halloween. And um, so that would suggest that the term ends on Halloween of next year, which leaves two months of expenses related to that outsourcing activity. It's my impression that the support will not start, um, the support part of the contract won't start until the, till the website is up and running. And therefore, once the website is up and running, I, it's my understanding that the year for the support would start then, because it's literally, um, it's not okay. for the support in them building the website, because of course we're working with them um, and their design teams, and they have all different levels of individuals that are involved with the, mm -hmm. Uh, website. I think so the actual support contract will start once the website is up and we're using and have the ability to use support. We're not calling it for support right now. So I, I would guess that, that it would start when the um, website is up and running, What's which is due to be May or June at this point. Okay, thank you. Any of next questions? year. Um, May or June of yes. 19, yes. So then I would think that the first payment would be in May or June of 2020 and therefore as Brian was asking it would be under the computer support okay. um, when you see the budget in front of you next year. Thank you. How much money is left do you know on that uh, Warren article number 18 of 2018 which I didn't bring my financials with me next, so I next don't time have that. or yeah. subsequently you can send mm -hmm. me that. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, just uh, I, I assume the network systems engineer is that Paul? Who is right. the networks? The network systems engineer is Paul, yes. And the IT technician, so these are both non-union positions? Correct, those are both non-union positions. Uh, Neither of them is new. There's been two full-timers in there. Oh, no, I, I, no so, I'm just yeah. making a statement. I'm, oh, yeah, Paul was both, around when I was on. I'm yeah, they're well both, um, those are both non-union positions, the two of them. So we have a 2.39% uh, on regular wages for them? That includes the 2% that they received with the non-union this year, and then there is an adjustment in those wages, and it's noted in bold there under regular wages for the MRI to bring them halfway Run to Run that the, by me again. That includes the 2% that they got this year? The 2% that the non-union received right. in 18, yeah. Okay, and then well, I would guess it? the 0.39 portion would be the adjustment that's noted on page 10 in bold. It's saying that the... 
The administration added the diff according to the MRA wage study, the network <coughs> system engineer is going to be moved to 3228 yeah, for a total of 458. So that yeah. the 458 dollars is making up the 0.39 percent, I guess, is what I'm trying to. But if they've already got, I'm just trying to understand here. Mm -hmm. If they already got the two percent in 18, why yes. is it on next year's? Why is it on next year's? This is what you're projecting for next year. Because they have, they received a two percent increase in 18, yeah. so their wage in 18 is two percent higher. And so 19, another two percent. Um, not in this line, no. Well, I'm. And I'm confused. It says 2.39. You you explained the 3.9, but where's the other 2 percent? The rate, the pay increase that they received in 2018. Well, I don't, I don't. It's listed as a 2019 increase, though. I don't. Well, because their pay went up by 2 percent. Well, in we, we have, everybody's pay. We're very well aware what pay went up. But there isn't anybody that hasn't. But anyway, so I'm just That's saying, all, for the voters. <laughs> that look at this. When I look at the 2019 proposed budget and yes. see 2.39 percent increase, I'm assuming that 2 percent is for 2019 too, no? No. Oh, first of all. Because it's over the 2018. Explain, Mr. Chairman, would you? Tell me when I'm wrong here. I'll try to make this simple. Uh, time management gave out raises, in this case to IT, using the current operating budget. Correct. Okay. When they projected out for next year's budget request, they incorporated that increase from the current budget, even though it probably, the money probably came from somewhere else, right? So, so uh, now they want to call it out as coming or being uh, appropriated for the wage, the wage itself, the salary itself, for 2019. I think what your <coughs> what your previous objections were in other meetings were that that raise not so much as a problem in the proposed budget. But rather, it's also incorporated in the default budget. That's where your problem stated when, when you were speaking more broadly Correct. at the last meeting. Yeah. And I think that's where you're trying to go tonight, right? It is in the default budget, the raise as well, right? Correct. Yeah. Because it's already been given. So it's just another example of what you were citing last week. Yeah, I, I, I think the way that I would explain that is in the if you look at the regular wage line for 2018, that does not include 2%. Right. However, they were given 2% in 2018 mm -hmm. off of the merit line. Mm -hmm. And now that 2% is in their, is part of their salary. So when their salary is reflected for 2019, that's why it's saying it's 2% higher, or 2.39, but we're not you're talking but, about the 0.39 now. The 2% higher than what the line was in 18. But you said something very important, and I want okay. the people to watch the replay this meeting. Quote, the 2% was not part of their two eight 2018 wage line, but they got it anyway. Because it was in the merit line, right. yes. Uh, or elsewhere. Or somewhere it else. It was in the merit line. The I'm very confident that it was in the merit line so because right. the Board of Selectmen, well, their 2%, but well, you asked a question, so I will finish answering it if you don't mind. The 2% on the merit line, when the Board of Selectmen gave out those 2%, the amount that they allocated to the non-union employees did not exceed the merit line in the budget. Mr. David, well, when we met points. today, we'll get back. when we met today, yeah, yeah, we had a very brief conversation. <clears throat> in the conversation, I asked about the default budget, mm -hmm. and you gave me a clock at the time, so thank you. But it was my understanding, at least I, I thought, I, I think I said this to you, so I just need clarification. That's all. As I said earlier, I thought the default budget was supposed to be from last year's, but then you read the, the articles yeah. and the law and the other thing, and they can be increased because of And I said that to you. And I thought you said to me, we don't do that, David. We don't move monies from one point to another. Because I said, well, if you didn't have money over here, you take it from some other place as long as you're within the budget. And I thought you said, we don't do that. I said, we Would do not make me? transfers. I said, it has not been the practice of the Board of Selectmen to make transfers from one line in the budget to a different line in the budget. That's what I was referring to. Okay, this is. It's uh, not a common practice for the Board of Selectmen to transfer money from one line in the budget to another line in the budget. Right. Well, hold that, on, hold on, hold on a second. Hold legal. on, David, hold on. Why should I hold on? I'm having a conversation with her and I'm trying to get a clarification. David, 
we are talking about MIS. If you have something on MIS, that's fine. If you want to talk about default budget, just hold on. It's on the agenda further on, okay? So if you have something on MIS specifically, no? I have a question. Mr. Frank. On average, you allocated a 2% increase overall to the IT budget on wages. Is that correct? I know it says 2.39, I know the adjustment. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just asking a question. So you allocated it. Basically, the I didn't allocate. I, just, you, the I put in what in the, what the, I put in their current pay as of today. Right. Or as of the time that I built the budget. No, no, I understand Does that. Answer that? that? I, I understood everything you said, but I'm just saying that you allocated <coughs> a 2% increase in salary, right? Because yeah. that's what and they have. And you projected yes. it out, correct? I put in their salary right. as, it, as it is today. Okay. I have a question on this budget, please. Ms. Regina. 2018, we were on a default budget. Correct. The merit line item, can you tell me what page I can find that on in this? What it, where is it's that? It's under personnel administration. Okay. So for 2018, we had merit pay increases. We had budget of 25292 Yes. Okay, so the Board of Selectmen throughout the year, 2018, now this is for the public at home, decided to give non-union employees a 2% across the board wage increase with the exception of town manager and the assistant town manager that are not included in this line. So we took the money that was not, did not exceed that amount in the budget that was approved by the voters in 2018 and we moved it to reflect the salary line items in the respective budgets, correct? Is that what we did? So now that 2% for MIS has come from this 25,000 and gone over to the MIS budget under salaries. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Morrow. Isn't that what I was just asking about moving things back and forth and you just said it was moved from point A to point B? Like Which has been the history of how long have we been doing it that way? Raises work the same raises for union employees if you have a okay. separate article or a separate budget line and the money is taken from that line the following year it's represented in the line item for that employee's salary except for one important distinction right. at least important in my mind Fred is that the union wages are actually approved by the legislative body namely town meeting so are these those are approved by uh, the governing body, the board of selectmen. The, the amount is approved by the town meeting. The, the appropriation for the merit pay, yes. 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 The actual right, right. The actual uh, direction as to where the money is going to go uh, is uh, generalized under merit pay, uh, which the board of selectmen subsequently allocates to individuals. Uh, which is a little bit distinct from the union contracts, which are specific to individuals based on their ranking in their union. But it works exactly the same way. It's very similar, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Mr. Wahlberg. I just want to clarify something Selectman Barnes said. So, so the voters approve. We're working off the default budget. Right, so that's the number we use, the 25,292. You gave out 22,000. But you, you and Christy have actually proven the point that it really doesn't matter whether we have a budget or a default budget because the raises, the merit line is going to be there regardless. Is that true or not true? Well, that's what, yeah. Because that's okay. That's that's what I'm, that's yeah. the point I'm saying. So that's why we get back to that so discussion. Is the um, I have a question. I always get nervous when I, especially with this environment. When I see the five-year plan to replace all the PCs within town of Pops, I don't see any plan. This will replace 19 P PCs. We went through this a couple of years. Was it two or four years ago, Tim, Mr. Chairman? I, I, when I see a line item like that, what, what is the plan? Are we, we doing some this year? Oh, well, good. We have a spreadsheet. Oh, good. And it goes out to 2021 right now, I believe. Um, and so... When they started this five-year replacement plan, they picked the, I think it's always right in the ballpark of about 20, mm -hmm. if you go back and look. Some years it's a little few more, some years it's a few less. They took the 20 that needed to be replaced the most at that current time, put those in, and then made a schedule going out based on that. We have three different categories of what we consider users. We have low, medium, and high. Um, the majority of the employees fall between low and medium. There are only a handful, probably less than five 
that are in the high category. Um, we have a breakdown <coughs> that shows what a medium, low, and high user has, like i3, i5, i7 processor, how much memory they need. I'm not going to quote it all off because I don't know it all off the top of my head, but we do have sheets that have all of that in it. Um, Who decides so uh, at what year uh, a PC gets replaced? What year are we looking at? How many years? Do they have it for three years, four years? No, no, everyone has them for five. Five years? Yes. I mean, there could always be an exception if someone's computer like dies and stuff, but mm -hmm. the majority of them are, it's like a five-year rotation, so no one's <coughs> getting a computer sooner than five years unless something happens. Maybe their needs have changed or, um, I mean, computers do crash sometimes, so sometimes someone Life might get one Frank, off. Frank, Frank, hold on. Sometimes somebody might get one off of schedule, but that's not very common, and if that person does, then someone else we usually hold off on. All set, Brian? Yeah, I, I just wanted Brian, to... Brian, are you all set? He, yes, thank you. Mr. Thank Frank. You. I just wanted to clarify. The yeah. average life expectancy of a computer is three to five years, and, the, and your it's not replacement years. plan marries that, you know, it's because obviously... Four five years, yes. Technology changes along the board, so you should be replacing computers three to five years, including uh, hardware, right? And you know that, right? I mean, that's this this five-year this five-year life cycle yeah. routine was uh, something that was endorsed by the once existing Selectman's IT uh, subcommittee. It was subsequently endorsed by the budget committee's uh, IT subcommittee yeah. uh, and tacitly approved by this budget committee as a pro as the proper yeah. number. I agree. Five as years. a general rule of thumb, it's right. not an absolute. It's not three years. Right. It's five years. Yeah. I five years, five. that's correct. Yeah. We do five, Brian. But, yeah. Oh, I know that. Oh, okay. Seriously, I seriously as, 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 a, as a person who is in the field, uh, I look at a three to five year life cycle, period. But I'm looking for five to seven, you know, as much as I can. So I've had two PCs at Comcast in eight years. They replaced the first one after five years. Well, I'm just saying it's five years as this industry norm. So. As we talked about that, yeah, I, mean, I agree. Well, I agree. Five years. I'm saying. Yeah, we're, we're arguing over how much we agree, basically. So but not at three yeah, years. I mean, it, it, Any other questions ahead. or comments on three, MIS? Go ahead, Mr. Frank. I just want to make a clarification. I said three to five, not three years. Three to five. There was a break in between. It could happen. Yeah, we, years we're all violently agreeing with you, Frank. Yeah. Any so other? I just want to clarify that. Any other questions or comments on MIS? Okay, I have some. Uh, at least some observations. As you know, Christy, I've pretty much been silent on this budget for the last couple of years because you've been busy, uh, one conversation at a time, you've been busy, uh, you know, straightening out the accounts to be more accurate in terms of reflecting what the expenditures are for, and I've been basically leaving it alone for the last couple of years. But I'm just scanning through the detailed page on this. I'm looking at repairs and maintenance. You've got the purchase, apparently, of uh, a lot of drives. Under repairs and maintenance? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Page 10. Page uh, 10. Yep, I got it. Um, and, and what I'm seeing there is a total of 42 disk drives totaling 95 terabytes of disk yeah. space. Those are used for, the majority of those drives are used for our backups of all of our servers and firewalls and email and all of the things that they back up. Those dri that's what most of the majority of those drives are used for, if not all of them. Well, I mean, it's, based on the size, you've got like, uh, I don't know, five, six entries here, one, two, three, four, five, six entries of different size drives. Ten, five, hundred gigabyte drives mm -hmm. is not suggesting that it's going to be used for server backups. The two 10 terabyte drives do suggest uh, a probable either a mirror drive or a backup drive. They use the two and they use the two terabytes for servers in video backups. Mm -hmm. Video backups? Video backups, yeah. What, what video does MIS deal with? The um, channel 22. But isn't stuff? that, uh, shouldn't that be funded out of the cable TV fund since it's cable TV specific? That would make sense, yep. I had to go ask them that, but. Um, it is that they do use the two terabytes for servers, too. Yeah, I, I, th I think it would be helpful 
okay. uh, to have uh, clarification on that during the course of between now and when we meet on January 3. Uh, also, you mentioned the PC replacement. You have in the spreadsheet. If you could email that to us, that would be good. Okay. Okay. Um, under supplies and expenses, we've got wiring supplies of $5,000. I think that's been there pretty much every year, right? Yes. Why are we allocating so much money for a wire every year? Well, this year we rewired the whole public works department. Right. What are we going to do next so, year? <coughs> probably this building. Can I rewire this my building house, hasn't maybe? been yeah, done. Be <laughs> okay. Also, under supplies and expenses, you got something called tools. Tools. For a thousand bucks. I don't know what that means. Tools. And why should it be under supplies and expenses if it's tool? Where would you like it to be for a tool? I don't know what kind tool. of tool you're talking about. So I think it's just whatever types of tools they may need in the year. I know I can't remember what we've bought in this year, but I know we have bought in stuff. Mm -hmm. um, they each have toolboxes, and I know we've bought wiring tools this year for sure mm -hmm. for, that they used when they were doing stuff at Public Works. Okay. Under uh, computer support, um, I see that we we have a, a bill for Comcast for $145 a month and, oh, yes, th and yeah. then another line here for a first light internet connection of 326 per month. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, the Comcast for 145 a month, that's not for internet access, that's for the TV itself. It does, it, does it say that thing? I don't know. I'm guessing. I, was kind of a, I should have put a question mark. No, I think that the Comcast, I don't think I actually know. The Comcast is our um, backup internet connection. Okay, so our backup internet connection yes. is $145 yes. a month. And our primary connection is First Light Internet. The First Light three, is the primary, yes. 326 yeah. per month. So I guess the Comcast connection is about half as fast, huh? It's very uh, slow. Uh, yeah. But it is used. I'll look into that. You've got uh, an entry here. Um, Logmein.com, 900 bucks. I was going to ask that. Why didn't you? I don't know. I, I That's for you. remote support offline, off the network. So that is so that if um, I'm working from home, I can get back into my uh, desktop here. Or if so, uh, I know sometimes the deputy director at DPW that uses that a lot. And then LogMeIn gives IT access if they need to get to our laptops to help us with a problem we may be having. So this is a support service. Yep, it's a remote support off network. Okay, with I assume a two layer login, your password plus some oh, yeah. dong dongle that gives you a number or something, right? Yes. Okay. They have separate, I have, Got it. I think I log in two, maybe sometimes three times depending on where I'm going. <coughs> you want to be remote, you have to. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. just want to get clear on that. Mail server for $3,000. Yes. That's mail as in M A I L for those at home. Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Should be actually email server, I guess, to be more accurate. Is okay. that software we're buying? I mean, we're we're paying for software, the three thousand dollars. Yes, and that's for a um, a new mail server. Yes, the three thousand mail server up here. Are you talking hardware or software here? Server license. So software. Yep, these are all. This should. Okay, because be you had been for years using some freebie job out there. Correct. And that's changed as of. We have a. We had a freebie one, then we had one that was like $1,000 or something a year, uh -huh. but we, um, they have since gone out of business, so um, this is a new, com would be a new company for us. Have you already uh, engaged them? No. Nope. This new company? We have not. Have you identified this new company? Nope. That's a ballpark figure for a couple of different um, companies that we've looked at. So we have no actual bid costs or bids no. or on anything on this, right? We have some quotes. Not you have quotes. Well, not quotes, but some. We have pricing. 
not we haven't like reached out to any companies and received firm mm -hmm. quotes but we have gone out looking for a replacement um, license for the mail server and it's in that ballpark of um, the three thousand dollars that's in there are any of those on uh, cloud-based they are not okay. And of course, we have SAM, which is the uh, software application monitor for mm -hmm. $3,432 uh, piece of software, right? Mm -hmm. um, did we already acquire this? We have this, yes. We're operating under it now? Yes. Yep. And we actually have to pay for it every year? Yes. And what happens if we don't pay for it? Does it stop working? Then we don't have that license anymore, so we would not be able to get any support. I don't believe that it would stop working immediately. I believe it would stop working if we needed support on it. But yeah, would, you would stop getting support on it, Correct. but it would continue to work. I don't know if it would continue to work without renewing the license. Could you get back to us on that? Mm -hmm. Town Hall Firewall for $5,800. Also software, I assume. Yeah. And same question on that. What happens if we don't pay that? Will it stop working? Oh, will we simply lose support? Any other questions or comments on MIS? I have one other comment, which is under the new equipment. Um, I already hear we have another Warren article coming down the pike very soon to a theater near us. That's going to just put out like a hundred plus thousand dollars. It's under a hundred now. Was it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Last year, 2018, we had a hundred twenty thousand dollar warrant article to buy a bunch of stuff, equipment, and we had budgeted for new equipment in the MIS budget for new equipment. So now we have two sources, and now we have another warrant article coming for some amount, uh, in addition to funding it here in the budget. Is that correct? This is twenty five hundred dollars. Twenty six. If, if yeah. they or twenty six hundred. Sorry, if there's something small that. They need during the year to, this is a, just another one of those category things. If we want, we could put that money anywhere in this budget. We are just trying to more appropriately reflect where things are being spent out of. So they have a new equipment line in case something comes up that they need new printers or new anything that, that's outside of things that we already have. Yeah, I'm not it's objecting. Not gonna be I'm just saying that's why it's yeah. there. Um, the Warren article, obviously, we would never ask for an item in the Warren article for $2,600 because of the fact that it's minuscule compared to right. um, the budget. All right. Any other questions or comments on MIS? Thank you very much. Now we're moving on to capital outlay. Capital outlay, uh, which is a line in the uh, form that we send to DRA, Department of Revenue Administration, right? Yes. And uh, last year we had zero in there, but the RS... Under the budget we had zero in there. Right, and, but then because... Um, then a number appeared in the actual budget as a consequence of Warren Article number 18 on 2018, right? I don't have the DRA form in front of me. I, my guess would be it would have been more than one Warren article that would have no, appeared there, but... Listed. We reviewed that a couple months ago when we first talked about this. So, you know, that, that one is there under capital outlay. And my general question under capital outlay is just what it is we use this for. What is the criteria by which we put stuff, or put stuff gets put in there, I guess is one better way of phrasing it. What is the criteria by which things get put under capital outlay? That's my generalized question. Warren article as opposed to the budget. Right. So it could be any, all Warren articles that are money Warren articles? Yeah, obviously, yeah, money art, because DR really only cares about money. But right. yeah, so any money Warren article that would qualify to be under capital outlay would go there. However, DRA also takes a lot of Warren articles, and depending on what they are, will tell me to move them to whatever section they fall under, mm -hmm. whether it be public works or um, infrastructure. That A lot of the Warren articles with the larger amounts fall under their... Uh, some of their different um, infrastructure accounts that mm -hmm. they have um, not under that capital outlay line specifically that you're referring to. 
But basically, the historically, for our purposes, meaning in finance and the board of selectmen and the town manager, if it's in the if it's an item in the budget, we were talking about fixed assets the other day. Mm -hmm. If it's the item that's in somebody in a departmental budget, it would fall under that departmental budget as opposed to being pulled out of that budget and put onto that capital outlay line for DRA. And I have spoken with DRA and our auditor since um, this topic has come up and. Both of them said it could be done either way. Most of the time, if you do put them under capital outlay, then the auditors tend to move it back into the proper budget. And if you put it in the proper budget, someone may move it out to capital outlay. I talked to our advisor at DRA, and she is the one who said that it could be done. Either way, it's, there's not a right or, or wrong way mm -hmm. to do it. But the majority of the times, the capital outlay line would be reflective of a, warrant, a separate warrant article, not the budget warrant article. Right, just, just so that everyone knows what I'm talking about. We sign a MS-737 form, uh, which gets to, uh, sent to DRA, and that's what actually shows up at the literature session. Yep. And subject to modification, the literature session actually shows up at session two, also known as the election. Once the election is over, a new form is generated called MS-232, is that right? And the MS-232, uh, is kind of a, it looks like a kind of a conglomeration of what was in the 737 plus money worn articles. So the 232, which is the actual operating budget, right? Yes. It's appropriations as voted, I believe, is the actual right. title on the MS 232. Right, but that's the funds we operate, the, the town government operates under for that year, is under Correct. MS 232. <laughs> And, appropriations and all of the yeah. money worn articles are somewhere in MS 232. Yep, and right. they are also in your MS 737 too. The warrant articles are. Yeah, but they're not in the same place in the sense that the capital outlay, for example, in last year's case, got populated with one warrant article. And we had proposed zero in there, and it magically got populated with a number as a consequence of the warrant article. Right? And I don't care which way we do it. What I do care about is that we try to be consistent with what we do, and even more important, that everyone understands what it is that we do. Okay? That's more important to me than anything. So I hope I didn't cause any additional confusion. Does anyone have any questions on what was just stated? I've been trying to find, didn't, help me out here. Didn't we talk about this in May where there were three items Am I on the same subject where there were three items that were posted under another area that were funded not under, for, for instance, um, there was a question you asked, and I think I gave you the answer. There was one of them was the blacksmith shops. Is that what we're talking about where certain expenditures were put under these, under this, I thought it was under the capital outlay, no? No, the only one under capital outlay was one article number 18, which was the uh, purchase. And that was another the, subject. Cause remember there was like three areas where we didn't know where that, they were, they were numbered in your, back in May, and I, I looked them up, and you had them by article number, and one of and we found out it was blacksmith shop and two other areas. Okay, it's something different. Yeah. Thank you. I think it makes sense for the budget committee subsequently, uh, you know, after we do, after the budget committee does its reorganization following the election, uh, probably spend a little time, maybe in an April or May meeting kind of thing, to go <coughs> over the 232. Uh, to understand what the true operating budget is, because I, I don't think we're actually uh, giving ourselves a visibility into no. what can be spent and, and from what. Um, and so I just wanted to highlight these things. I still completely at a loss as to why one out of 18 is under capital outlay. Yeah, that's what. Okay. Um, yeah. And I'm not standing. I'm not sitting here objecting to it. I'm just totally don't understand why it's there in capital outlay. Who put it there and why? So I'd be curious. It's not a big deal. Um, so that's it. Anything else on capital outlay? Great, thank you. And then we'll move on to everyone's favorite topic, right, Fred? The default budget. <laughs> Any comments or questions on the default budget? Uh, I'll just kind of make an intro here. Christy did deliver us uh, the uh, spreadsheet uh, for the budget, which now includes the default budget column being populated. We received that yesterday, uh, and tonight she provided us uh, a printout, three-hole printout of the appropriate sheets for us to, as a matter of homework, Mr. Frank, 
put them into our uh, budget book. Excellent. Okay. Thank um, you. And so, uh, any, I don't think I have anything more to say on that at the moment. Any, anything else uh, comment-wise on default budget? I, if you could, could you make the cost comparison between the default budget and the selectman's budget, just the total dollar amount approximately? I can. Let me just get to the right page because I don't know it off the top of my head. Okay, so let's see. The 2019 selectman's budget is $598,123 higher than the uh, 19 default budget. And is it fair to say that's really the only area of the budget that can be changed? The default budget is prior contracts, as I understand it. So the default budget must be raised to pay for current debt obligations. Yes. That's so debt. we have spent several months talking about a little less than $600,000. And if we impacted that $600,000 by 10%, that would be like sixty thousand dollars. I just find this a, an unusual process, where you can impact it so much just on the margin. That's more of a comment than a question. The uh, the state house changed the default. Some changes in the default budget processing. Is that fair, Christy? Uh, this year. Um, which I understand is the reason why getting the default was a little delayed because you had to do a little bit more work up in terms of explaining why changes occurred. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you can see on the screen, this is a, you know, part of what the NHMA's uh, Town and City magazine had. It's the same article that actually uh, we looked at earlier and I sent out to you earlier. And I sent out again today just before tonight's meeting. <laughs> you have reference in your email box. Uh, it's the same one that refers to giving the budget committee the uh, authority to require tally votes. Yeah. It's the same article. Further in that article, it speaks about adjustments to the default budget must be presented in detail, which has real impact in terms of how we process this. We have to actually discuss the default budget at public hearing as well as the literacy session. Okay? Not just kind of like pass it by. All right. You and can so be aware it and you no, no, the, the law is that. Okay, we have to discuss it. That's what the change is. There's no change, as far as I'm aware of, yet. I haven't fully researched it yet. But I'm not aware of any change in, in uh, how it could be changed. Okay. So what you're saying is you can talk about it, but you can't. You're required to talk about it. Oh, nice. You're required to yeah. talk about it, but you can't do anything about it. At the end of the day, you can't change the default budget. We well, no doubt, Mr. Ladd, by your uh, persuasive discussions, changes may very well be made. But we won't be making them, if that's your question. Are you saying now that the legislative body can change the default budget? No, I'm not. What are you saying? I'm saying that the Board of Selectmen can change the default budget uh, at any time up to uh, and before, I think it's January 24 or 23, something like that, before they get to, well, they could even change it at the Luther session, right, Fred? No? No. Okay, so it's the 24th, is, the January 24th is their drop dead date when they do the final documents. The 28th. Is it 28th? Okay. It's the 28th. Yes, the 28th. Okay. Yeah, the 28th. Right. Yeah. That's what we've been talking about, 28th. Does that normally happen, that the Board of Selectmen change the default budget? Um, not that I'm aware of. I've seen them make changes in the past. It's not unusual. I wouldn't call it normal either. Okay. And I would assume those changes would be fairly insignificant monetarily? Well, it depends on your definition of insignificant. Mm -hmm. Well, it just seems this is a very convoluted process. I agree. With very little impact financially. I would like to make an additional comment. I am really impressed with you, Chrissy. You come in here with an incredible breadth of knowledge about a whole range of topics, I'm sure none of which you are out working with every day in that you have information about all the department activities, but you don't work for those departments in, in the sense of doing their daily obligations. I am impressed with your patience and your courtesy. 
dealing with what I would describe as a process and people that can be rather idiosyncratic in the way it's done. So keep up the good work, please. Thank you. Mr. Lett. Yes. Is there any human being alive or dead that was lacking idiosyncrasies? None, but okay, I think we may have much. cornered the market. Mr. Warburton. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make comment to Mr. Ladd's point. Yeah, I mean, chances are, and, and history will show, I mean, making changes to the actual default number, the budget doesn't change. What is the important piece upon this whole thing are those words, default budget, and how it compares to the proposed budget of 19. That is the, the important piece. Because what to marry those two together is never going to happen in a sense because you have one road going this way, the other road going that way. But it, it is what it is, and we do have a say in certainly with the final review on whatever changes we make to the to pros 19. The default budget is going to be the 598, which is significantly higher than the proposed budget. But that, as the chairman said, that you know the law is the law, and that's where we're at. And hopefully one of these years we'll get back to normalcy as far as that. But uh, I understand what you're saying. No, I haven't. I don't even remember, Mike, if we ever changed any default numbers. I mean, they were given, but I don't. Yeah. It wasn't it wasn't as prevalent back uh, then. But uh, yeah, and I I think uh, all all comments anybody makes is is all of all are great. I mean, we we our job is to look into asking questions. Um, we have a finite amount of time to do so. It seems though every year some people want less time to do so. I think it's so important and and, and the new business <coughs> I'm gonna be talking about meetings because I, I think we need more, not less, because I think just getting the, the fall budget technically and we appreciate what Christy does, uh, getting it yesterday in my email to really dissolve uh, absolve what's in there, plus the Warren articles, we're gonna need a lot of time. We owe it to the voters and the taxpayers, but that's all I have to say on this default budget area. Mr. I have David. a question for Brian, for what you just said. Yes, sir. I either misheard it or I misheard it. I'll assume I misheard it. Mm -hmm. I thought you said that the default budget is going to be more. No, uh, 598000 less than the proposed budget. Less than the proposed budget. Less than I the proposed budget. More. Yes, thank you. I believe he was referring to it was more than the present operating budget. That's correct. By, I think, 2.7%. Right. right, that's what right. I But you're right. I mean, it's... But it is versus the operating. I'm just correct. trying to clarify. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I you're right. Thank you, David. Oh, no. <laughs> Let me show you that one. The reason but, the reason that, are you done, David? No. Okay, go ahead. Rhetorically, talking about the default budget and operating budgets, I'm a, I've had the frustration that what I thought that Bob said in reference to it, we look at it, but we really can't change it. Okay. So okay. we talk about it. We look at inside and outside, but why do we spend so much time talking about it if we don't have any power to change anything one way or the other? Maybe that's a rhetorical question, but it's, it seems to me that we go over a lot of stuff, and I don't want to sound argumentative, but I, I would agree with what Bob just said about because I felt the same way when Christy was being asked a lot of questions. Uh, it was almost like she was on the hot seat. But you're the only person here has the relevant... You, I apologize, but you're the only real person here that knows all this stuff, <laughs> and you're, you're like gold. <laughs> okay, just hit with the dirt. Mr. <laughs> Warburg. Dave, let me clarify again, and I agree with you. However, follow the train of thought. It's not that we don't have enough to say default budget. We absolutely need those numbers to compare with the proposed budget to make, you know, prudent decisions on whether we're going to put forth the uh, operating budget for 2019 or the voter is going to come down to the fall budget. That's why it's important. If we didn't have that, the voter said, well, gee, should we vote for this? It's $600,000 less than this year's, this coming year's proposed budget. That's why it's important. So you do marry and you comparison both of them and look at historical things and why the number is what it is. Am I getting a general sense from the body that there's a question about why we waste the time dealing with the default budget? Is that the general sense I'm hearing? Maybe I could add to what you just said. David. One second. Yeah. Is there? A, am I accurate in, in sensing the body, Mr. Ladd? You know, I would think it would be better to start out with that number and work on the area you can influence, which, and as a point of information, Christy, using my hypothetical of 10% of $600,000 or $60,000 as a reduction, 
in the BOS budget? What would the tax rate implication be of that? <coughs> it's pretty nominal, isn't it? I think it, I didn't do that to be honest with you, but I think it's three, it's about three cents per 100,000. I think that's, that's what it was last, last year, time, yeah. 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 So it's around three cents per hundred thousand. So. so would it be in an average house about twelve cents? <laughs> about. Yeah. I didn't do the numbers honestly this year, well, but it was like about three cents. Yeah. Right. The, 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 reason, the reason that we need to talk about the default budget is uh, manifold. Some of the more important points are that um, if an error is discovered, and errors are made because humans are involved in creating this stuff, sometimes errors are made. If they're brought forth uh, and they are an error, then it can be corrected in time, right, Christy? Of course, the correction is going to be made by the Board of Selectmen, right? Uh, so that's one reason. It's our ob obligation to make sure as, as, uh, as a committee, a finance committee, uh, that we correct any errors that we can find, if there are any. I mean, no one's called out any errors, so at least not yet. Uh, and so that's one reason why we want to you know, uh, do a, uh, an analysis of the default budget. The other reason is obviously is since we have to um, now discuss under the new law the default budget at um, public hearing, our public hearing, and then at the literature session, we need to be informed and the public needs to be informed should they come in and want to talk about it, they need, to, they need to be informed as well. So, you know, that's yet another reason why we need to discuss the default budget. And there's still a third reason, you know, two years ago there was a petition, more an article, to give the budget committee the authority to actually create the default budget. And that, that they got slightly over 50% of the vote, uh, and so 50% of the voters actually want us to do it. The law requires that it got 60%, so it's not in effect, but still there are over 50% of the voters that wanted us to create the budget. Certainly. I guess a larger percentage would want us to at least review it. So those are the three main reasons that come readily to my mind as to why we need to spend a little time on the default budget. Any other comments or questions on the default budget? No. Okay, great. Review of funds. Christy sent us a list of the uh, funds. Uh, I just have to grab my folder on that. Has there been any updates to that, Christy, since you sent that out? No. Okay. The only fund we seem to be not paying attention to is the unassigned fund balance. Um, Have I been getting those? Because uh, you had sent me an email. I've been left off all the emails since I got on. I don't know if I'm blacklisted. I resent the ones that I had sent out to the committee. I've only got one from you. I sent two yesterday. We got one from you. I was just okay. looking. So um, this one went to the chairman. This one went to the chairman um, last before the meeting last week because I thought it was going to be discussed on Thursday night. So I had sent it to... Um, you sent it to everybody? No, last week yeah. I only had sent it to you oh, okay. to distribute because I usually send things to you to distribute to the committee. Mm -hmm. But your, the just so to be clear, your distribution list did not include Frank It did or not, or, no. And to be honest with you, we're all a little nervous to reply to anybody. You know, if I say, hi, Fred Welch, I might get, you know, taken to court. So when you, <laughs> when you don't send me something... I'm not going to reply because this is what went on here two years ago with the fiasco, which Sergeant Henderson and others never did get an answer on that RSA 91, which was ridiculous, and that's not your issue. But I get a little nervous when I'm not getting something. I don't dare reply. I think I called you on the phone or, and yeah. said, well, why am I? I'm not surprised I'm not getting them. Don't, don't worry about that. That's, to me, it's, uh, yeah, I'm on now. But I wasn't on. That's what I'm saying. But anyway, okay. But ahead. in fairness, until this week, I had been sending things only to the chair to be distributed, and I pr I brought the default budgets last week to the meeting and handed them out. They were emailed out on Tuesday, Brian, and you didn't get that email because you were not included. But um, this fun list went out last Monday or Tuesday to the chair. Yeah. I don't believe this was part of the email yesterday to answer that direct question, though. Thank you. Does everybody have a copy or does, do Well, does you know, it's been my observation, Christy, that I've been seeing uh, emails from you going to the entire committee. And this week, yes. Well, in, in the past as well. Yeah. And so, um, and you're not getting those emails, is that what I'm hearing? I wasn't until... He was not, no. I was not getting anything. Uh -huh. Okay.
well, I don't know how we're going to deal with that because how do you know to say I didn't get something until you know someone else got it? Well, that's correct. Miss uh, Regina. I think she said prior to this week she was only emailing the chairman, so Brian Warburton wouldn't be included in that email. Well, that's what she said, but it's... I didn't receive the emails <coughs> either until this week, so I'm not sure why. What is the deal? She said before she was emailing just the chairman, and no, she, she recently was, started emailing... There's been a mix. Everybody. There's been a mix. There's been a mix from yeah. what I see. Right. So, it would so probably be better just to be consistent. Uh, send all the emails to me, or send all the emails to everybody. Uh, Make a choice. I don't. I mean, I don't really care. Uh, I don't think anyone does. Uh, as, long as I get them. But yeah, just just be consistent with it. That's all. Okay. Uh, what's the prospect of actually actually getting a number for the unassigned fund balance? Actually getting a number, the unassigned fund balance. Yeah. Is there not a number right on the sheet I had given? <coughs> the unassigned fund balance was there. I thought so. Hold on, let's see here. It has $7,499,477 and then $420,000 was allo um, allocated to Warren articles last year, so it brings it down to, I thought I had printed I got it right here, Chris, if you want. You do? Okay. Seven I thought I had brought that. 7079477. Now is at the time of the tax rate setting. I thought I made a copy of that page, but oh, I did. So basically, yep. seven million, right? Yep, seven million seventy-nine thousand four hundred seventy-seven. Excuse me. Seven did million is close enough for my brain. Sheet? Did everyone get the fund sheet from you, Tim? Mm -hmm. Well, when I saw the fund sheet, um, I thought I saw everyone's email, and so I don't believe I sent it out. But I will subsequently. Uh, I have copies. Thank you very much. Would you like to Thank you. Thank you. You don't want to come apart now? I know. I'm stuck. You don't want to disperse it. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so the unassigned, I don't see the unassigned fund balance on here. Um, and it's great. The number was seven million as of? The unassigned fund balance is under general, and then over in the notes section, it tells you what the unassigned fund balance is. But it's seven. Million seventy nine thousand four hundred and seventy seven dollars. Oh, yep. At the time of the tax rate setting, so. Which was. They only adjusted the fund balance. The unassigned fund balance is adjusted at the time of the tax rate setting based on the MS five thirty five that the auditors What's the date? have submitted. The date of the tax rate setting. Yeah. I only made a copy of the last page. I don't have. Something. This was printed on ten twenty three. Yeah. I'm not going to swear that that was the date the tax rate was set, though. I don't have that in front of me. I don't have the whole thing. Is that pretty close to me? So we can call it Halloween and be safe with that, right? Sure. Easy to remember Halloween. <laughs> so $7 million as of Halloween. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the review of funds? I just had a question. Can you explain the reason... As I understand, the Board of Selectmen have chosen not to use any of the unassigned money to reduce the tax rate. The Board of Selectmen, it's my understanding, Regina might be able to answer better since she's a select person, okay. but it was my understanding that they chose not to because the municipal portion of the tax rate did not go up. It went down slightly, mm -hmm. and they had used um, unassigned fund balance in the past to keep, their goal was to keep the municipal portion of the tax rate level and therefore the, since it was lower than what it was the prior year they chose not to use any of the unassigned fund balance at that time to offset the municipal portion of the tax rate and also knowing um, that in years 21 22 our debt is going to increase um, from the project the 11 point I'm sorry I can't remember all the numbers 11 point something the wastewater treatment mm -hmm. phase it was um, approved in March. It was 11.7, I believe, or 11.3 million. That's going to come on in like 22, I think, is our best guess at this point. So, and they the were, marsh pipe. And the marsh pipe. My it's going to be on in 20. <coughs> My question wasn't to question the decision, oh. just to 
have the information. Right, and, that, and that's, that's that my decision. interpretation, but like I said, Regina may have a better, or might have a different interpretation of why they chose not to. I'd say Christy's interpretation is right on. It was, mm -hmm. you know, our portion of the rate went down, so why offset the rate now when yep. it doesn't really make sense to when we're going to have a lot of borrowings come on the books in the next couple of years. It sounds pretty reasonable to me. Thank you. Well, my interpretation is a little bit different. My interpretation was that uh, since the tax rate was already scheduled to go down, there wasn't a great deal of motivation to apply any of the unassigned fund balance to make it go down further. Additionally, the argument was put forth that we have uh, things coming down the pike that we're going to want to spend money from from the unassigned fund balance. And that will be more clearly manifest when we get the list of warrant articles, because I understand a number of them are tapping the unassigned fund balance. So it's not as though we're not spending money out of the unsigned fund balance or proposing to. It's just that they didn't propose to take it for the purposes of reducing taxes. But you could actually argue that the effect is the same. <coughs> well, that will depend on the outcome of the votes on the warrants. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Regina. Yes. We, uh, last year we actually used money to offset the tax rate, and then we used money on right. some of the warrant articles. Right. Because they're projects that the town needs to have done. No. And that's what we're doing. So instead of taking just a blanket amount of money to offset the tax rate this time, yes, we still have some warrant articles that are going to hit the unassigned fund balance. But instead of taking, I think last year we did 600000 something like that. And the auditors said that our unassigned fund balance actually pretty much had no change between last year and this year. Mm -hmm. So it stayed pretty level, mm -hmm. even with what we did last year. So we're hoping that when these bonds come on, you know, we can have a little extra money to offset the tax rate. That's what I was hoping. I believe that's what the board agreed. That's what we discussed. Mm. So it's available. Mm. Unfortunately, mm. Bob's question was like, what were they thinking? You know, so we're all going to jump into the various selectmen's minds and extract their thoughts. I think he was An impossible to task. Why we but, didn't. you know, my interpretation was that it's pretty much consistent with uh, what others are saying. I just added in the fact that they were targeting money for other things in the future, Mr. David. Just for the sake of communication, from what you were just saying, because this person's interpreting this, which is good, and what you just said, I love it. But I think the selectmen or the town manager, somebody should be letting the, the public know publicly that we're really doing it. If they're watching TV, they're going to find out that you knew. I consider it smart management of the budget, what you're doing. But I think the people are you told. I think I believe we talked about it. It was meeting. talked about yeah. it. I, mean, I, I, I said about, uh, I think married what I just said right now. Right I mean, about that same exact words, debt. but no, it was yeah. talked about the meeting, and it mirrored exactly what I said. <laughs> exactly what you said. <laughs> He's the firewall. <laughs> this stuff is subject to interpretation. What people you know said of men. That's why I wanted stuff, to so. just put it in black and white. That's all. Well, all these other things are in black and white. Interpretations are never in black and white, except for one particular opinion. Leveling the tax rate. That's the, uh, that's the goal. That's the mission, for as long as we possibly can. We don't know what emergencies we're going to have to deal with between doing that, but that's we, what the mission is. I think we effectively killed this question, right? It's called yeah. a rainy day budget. Okay. Anyway. All right. Um, we're done with the review of funds for now. We all have the information to consider over our Christmas holidays. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, new business to schedule. Uh, schedule for uh, right now, as I understand from our earlier thinking, we're going to use January 3rd, which is presently scheduled as a snow date, as our next meeting, which we can enjoy the warrant articles. And given that we have not, when we went to the fall budget just yesterday, basically, uh, we haven't really had, I haven't had a time to do it, drill down on it. Uh, I'll probably suggest that we put that in uh, on the 3rd as well. Uh, because there may be things that are spot during the course of the uh, week. Mr. Warburton, I know you want to say something. Oh. I, can t I can read your mind at this well, point. <laughs> as, as was customary when I was involved with the Board of Selectmen and a zillion other committees in this town, I, I can remember on one of my birthdays on Hampton Beach, I gave up a birthday party to do a meeting with the zoning board after the old salt fire, and is, and I know a lot of people, Regina and others, do the same thing. They they do a lot of different you know events, and it's tough. I mean, you put a lot of time in. But that being said, I think we need to meet Tuesday, and I'll tell you why. 
And I'm going to use David Marr as an example. So David Marr gets the Warren articles, what all well and good, has a default budget. But maybe just having some discussion up front in case anybody had any questions. And then we're still coming back on the 3rd. What I fear is we get here January 3rd for all of us that will be here. And then all of a sudden we're into final review on the 9th. I, I, I think we're here to work. There seems to be this permeation on boards to have less meetings. Let's just all just let it fly and get to taxpayers. And I, I, I personally would rather us see, keep the schedule. I appreciate uh, the schedule you're doing, and I'm probably going to be outvoted on this, but I, I personally would think that December 18th just kind of, you know, get started. At least people can look together at the Warren articles or whatever and, and see what we're having. Otherwise, we wait to January 3rd. Yeah, we have time to look at it, but... What's the difference? Are people going to look at them Christmas week or Christmas Eve versus, you know, Thursday, January 3rd or whatever? So I'm just... Well, I'm, let me tell you the difference. Yeah. The selectmen, according to the town manager, yeah. said that they're going to approve all the war articles, or at least Monday the money night. war articles on Monday night. Yeah. And then we will have them delivered to us perhaps as soon as Tuesday morning. All right. And then we're going to meet on Tuesday night. We haven't had a chance to really read them and, and uh, you know, look at the big picture and all that other stuff. So I, I just don't think we have enough time to consume it all in in a 12-hour period, effectively, prior to the meeting. So I, I just question whether we would have an effective meeting. I mean, we could spend the time to review what we reviewed so far. Just I mean, it is possible. Well, yeah, it is possible. We could, you know, uh, dot a few more I's and cross a few more T's of what we've already done. It's also possible we could take some of the Warren articles, or some of them are pro forma, and just get them out of the way. Um, yeah, that's possible. I mean, it's up to the committee. I, I'm just putting it out there. That's m what my feeling is. But I'm not uh, arguing either way. I'm just no. I understand. To, you know, I'm trying I understand. to I'm just get a sense of how, whether it would be a valuable meeting to meet on Tuesday. And I can see possibilities for it being valuable, and I can see possibilities of saying, well, in January we got uh, January third. We're definitely going to be meeting then, um, and then we meet on the ninth and the tenth two days in a row of the following week, and the 10th is the final review. Uh, and then we have the public hearing on the 15th, uh, and that's essentially the, the schedule. So as usual, we have crunch time in January. Oh, I understand. Uh, and we want to relieve as much of that as possible. To your argument, if we meet on Tuesday, we can get rid of some of the pro forma stuff, possibly raise questions that, need to get an that could get answered during the holidays so that we could be more fully informed on the third. So I see some virtue there. Um, what's what's the thoughts of the rest of the body? Mr. Frank. You know, I, I have several uh, comments. Well, number one is you <coughs> have no idea when you're going to get them on Tuesday. It could be 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 yeah. o'clock. So you've got virtually no time to review them before the 7 o'clock meeting. All right. Okay. Uh, the second thing is, didn't we take a vote last meeting that we were going to forego the 18th? It, you know, well, not quite. We decided to put everything that was on the 18th on the onto the 13th, yeah. thus freeing up the 18th right. should everything, anything arise, yeah, basically, right. and something has arisen. We've discovered that all the money war articles will be available. But uh, you don't know what time. Really <coughs> no, we don't. Right. Right. Any, any, anything else? I, I thought the town manager said Tuesday or, or Wednesday. Wednesday, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so that Wednesday would make Tuesday a total wash if mm -hmm. they came in Wednesday. And it's terribly close to Christmas. So Seven I, days. I would be against meeting a week before Christmas. Just so you know, this, this committee meets uh, the third Tuesday of the month. And the 18th is the third Tuesday of the month. So it is a regularly scheduled meeting, right. quote unquote. Uh, not that that has a great deal of significance in my mind. But any Put other comments? No. Huh? It just it put me down as no for next Tuesday. Any other comments on meeting on the 18th? Well, if you don't have the paperwork, it, huh? if, I mean, it's I'm getting I'm getting a sense that the, the body doesn't want to meet on the 18th, but we will meet on the third. With new vigor, with the new year. I just find it interesting with the millions and millions of dollars we talk about. We can't find anything to review on uh, you know with a 28. 192 proposed budget. I don't know. What if it snows on the third? Well, that's a. Yeah, that's well, then, then we're going to have to. It snows on the 18th. 
then we're gonna have to, you know, piggyback on to the ninth and, and the ninth and the tenth. You know. However, you can't, you can't if you don't get the stuff till Tuesday or Wednesday. But we've sat at this meeting and got stuff handed to us the night of the meeting. Well, we, we got it today. Well, there is another alternative other than Wednesday. I mean, uh, next Tuesday, which is December 26th. I have the room for that date. It's also a snow date. Uh, we will have all the warrant articles for sure by then. Um, so we could meet on the 26th. That's Wednesday. The 26th Wednesday is Christmas. Wednesday. The day yes. after Christmas. Yeah. Correct. That has no appeal to me, the day after Christmas. Uh, so this committee could be effective uh, since we have all the warrant articles at that point and basically a week to review them before we actually start talking about them. What about Thursday then? Two days after Christmas. I don't have the room. Oh, oh yeah, that's... Uh, I, I picked these dates as the best dates Based on availability. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I, 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 think, <coughs> I think the arguments against the 18th are strong. I, 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 I think there's an argument that Brian pretty much made about meeting sooner than the 3rd, which is also strong. The only compromise date we have between the 3rd and the 18th is actually the 26th, which I think, the more I think about it, actually does make sense. Uh, but it's up could to Could you board. meet in the library? Yeah, you want library? To. We could meet at Dunkin' Donuts if we wanted to. Why would we do that? But you want to be on camera. And, you know, okay, you can only make I'm just saying. If we couldn't meet in this room, you mean? Exactly. Could, cool. could, because if you could meet in this room, it's used. Is there any other place we're allowed to meet? <coughs> we're allowed somebody to meet just anywhere we wish to meet. But somebody just said we have to be on camera. We don't have to be. It's not a law. But I think everyone desires that our meetings be on camera. And so when I say everyone, I mean the entire population of the planet. I understand that. Yes. Yeah. But in a few non-earthly well, people. I haven't identified any of those yet, Well, but I look forward to meeting your friends at yes. your earliest opportunity. <laughs> I'll be <beat> you up. <laughs> you know, the other thing we didn't think of, and I'm thinking of Brian and Bill, so maybe the 26th, they're not going to be around. Who? The cable folks to film. Oh, they'll be here. Uh, Mr. Frank. Yeah. Uh, I, <clears throat> My own opinion is that uh, I think we should stay with your January 3rd date. I understand Brian's concerns, but it is the day after Christmas, and I'm sure most of us have plans on leaving Hampton. I'm working. Or, I don't take six weeks vacation. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But then where do you have the time to work on the... I work all the time, nighttime, mornings. Okay. And well, you Brian, may be working the 26th. <laughs> It would be working the 26th. No, okay. you, you're going away. That's what I'm saying. So no, you, what I'm saying is people do have family obligations, you know, and I'm, unless you have no life. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> very, use, very useful. Yeah. But not helpful. Not helpful. <laughs> I mean, I know there's a few people on this. I mean, well, I have, have a life. No life. But that's besides the point. Okay. So well, Frank, I've you have a compelling point. I mean, the entire United States population often schedules celebrations on the 26th of December. Give me a break. I mean, if we're not traveling out of town for well, Christmas, we're still going to be in town for the day after family Christmas. Family members. So all I'm saying is, you know what? I'll make a motion that we stay on the third. I'll second. Is there I any? Is there any other uh, discussion on this topic? What's the motion again? I have not recognized the motion yet. Oh. <laughs> you have any you just on made this? a motion. I'm good. Whatever the committee decides to do. So you could live with the 26, couldn't you? So could not. And I'm tempted to say that that's where it ought to be because we, we may have a workload problem in early January. That's the risk that we're running, I think, is we do have, a, you know, snowfalls and, and other things that come up in early January. We're really going to be squeezing it, especially this year. We're not seeing, we're not, we haven't done the final on SAU 90 yet. They're coming in on the 9th. Right. So well, that's, that's an, the other thing. That's an yeah. additional piece of work that yeah. we're not used to doing in January that's being added in here. And so, what if we have inclement weather and all that other stuff? You know, you can has extend a your meeting on the 9th. I don't think you're going to spend three hours <coughs> on the school board unless you don't be so confident. Don't be so, don't sure. be so confident, Frank. Well, after the comments we heard at the last SAU 90 meeting, 
it may actually engender yeah. certain people to make statements that are longer than otherwise anticipated. But the bottom line is we have not done SAU 90 final review. We haven't seen any of their warrant articles yet. Right. That's and we have not reviewed, the, you know, we have not finalized their budget yet. <laughs> normally <laughs> that's a full meeting. <laughs> normally <laughs> that is a full <laughs> meeting in itself. We could meet at your, you although we can't do it at your house. house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you speculate on the warrant articles and do them tonight? We, we only I have think we should articles. do it on so the 26th as sure long as we get time and hour. an hour for a warrant article. Oh, oh boy. I make a motion that we have a meeting on December 26th for all those that I attend. Second. Yes. Well, we made a, the other motion. Which yeah, he, 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 okay. he didn't recognize it. All right. That's, no, I haven't recognized any motion yet. That's there is correct. no motion until the chair recognizes it. Very good. And ultimately, it's the chair's responsibility to call a meeting. So uh, apparently, there's a division on the on this committee as to what we're going to meet and, and all that sort of stuff. And given the contingency factors that may occur in early January that would really crimp our ability to get effective work done, uh, and given the, the desire to not meet on the 18th for good reason, I am going to call a meeting on December 26th. So our next meeting will be uh, December 26th. Is there any other new business? Mr. Wabur. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, so December 26th. Mr. Uh, Chairman, first of all, thank you again for all the great information you sent. I, I, I really have to tell you I've been very impressed and in, in, in what I uh, choose to call snippets and those great snippet videos, and I, I appreciate it. I have literally watched every one of them three times, maybe four, since you sent them. And I watch them at night as well. What are you talking about? The trash the truck The trash incident? truck incident. Okay. Uh, incident. We phrase it issues. trash truck issues. I would like to. I'm I'm still confused about this multi-year contracts mm -hmm. for the trash trucks, and I think a lot of people are. Um, you know, I kept drilling down on the motions that were made at last February 2018, and then the discussion by the town attorney, and then the discussions in the fall of this year, and then when Director Jacobs and Deputy Hale came in with the selectmen's meeting. Um, I have this thing in my mind it still says appropriations and you know I hear the town manager made a comment about well to Selectman Woolsey no well it doesn't matter because it's a contract and it will be in the default budget here we go again but I'm not so sure my interpretation of that article that got approved is what we're being told it is whether right or wrong I'd like to have an, an official or an illegal opinion that you can look into, Mr. Chairman. I'm not comfortable with these, these multi-year uh, contracts on the trucks. And, and I've been through a lot of stuff in this town. I'm just not comfortable with what I'm, what I'm seeing on this. Well, I'll do the best I can to get you that. Look, look in, the old, in the 2006 town report. Yeah. We bought a ladder truck, $665,000, five-year lease purchase, with an escape clause in it for non-funding. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we bought that truck. The, the voter it went through town meeting, it was approved, and we purchased that truck. It was delivered. We paid it off in the five years. We still got it. Mm -hmm. It works. You got to make sure that the language is appropriate mm -hmm. for the two packers. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying, Mike. That's get the exactly town attorney right. to give you an opinion, or get somebody else. Mm -hmm. The reason for the escape clause is so you don't have to bond. Yeah, yeah. So it's treated as a contract. Right. But if you don't enter into a multi-year contract, you don't get the truck. Right. It's kind of it's, and lease purchase agreements work very well if they're. Put together problem. Oh, we've done lease purchase. Yeah. We did them with the police cars several years, and then they stopped that. And now I don't know if we're doing it again or not. But um, I, I just would feel comfortable asking right. the chair to look into, because I, I I've, I've already got agreed to do the best I can. Yeah, I'll thank give you. Give you something on the twenty sixth. I, I, I hopefully. Will appreciate that. Okay. Any any other new business? Any other old comments? <laughs> too stale to Just I throw a twist in there for you. Okay, so we are adjourned. Thank you very much. Twenty-sixth at seven. Okay. okay.